the uh, liberation uh, because <clears throat> I had, as I said, I'd written almost 50 romances, I guess. And, uh, and I had, I wanted to, you know, expand. I wanted to expand my audience. I wanted to expand creatively. Uh, being able not to have any restrictions, any parameters. I wanted to write a standalone book that wasn't part of a series. Uh, and by series, I mean, you know, publishers have published Silhouette or Intimate Moments or Ecstasy. And I would write for those lines. It wasn't like the books fit together. It was just that, you know, they, they were under an imprint. Uh, but I wanted to to do my own thing, see how far I could go in terms of broadening my career, expanding it, getting more readers. So my agent and I went to uh, a publisher and said, you know, I'm kind of up for grabs <laughs> at this stage in my career. And uh, um, and while, while she was kind of negotiating and feeling out the different publishers and, and uh, uh, editors and so on, I was writing this book and, uh, and I, didn't, I didn't have to censor myself, you know. And so I remember when it first came out and people were reading it, it was like, she used to be such a nice girl. <laughs> what happened but uh it was so liberating you know not to not to have to uh, conform and uh so that that really was uh a big stepping stone and then i wrote the next book i had a three book contract then i wrote mirror image and that was my first new york times that was a big leap before I ever wrote uh, Slow Heat in Heaven, which was kind of what they called a breakout or a crossover book. Um, and so I had I had a had a lot of practice by then. It changed my life. It absolutely changed my life. I was I was no better writer the day after I made the list than the day before. But it's that acknowledgement. Um, and it it immediately you know catapults you into a, a new category, into a new level, strata. Uh, I remember, you know, just just thinking of all the people who, all the authors who had gone before, <laughs> who were called New York Times bestseller so and so. And now for the rest of my life, if that were the only time that I'd made the list, if I'd only made it for that one week, I would still be New York Times bestselling author, Sandra Brown. And so it, that, that was a very important distinction. And in, in my mind, the books were still as hard to write. It wasn't like there was some magic you know, formula that also that opened up all of these avenues of creativity, I still had to bang my head against the wall every day. But it was the perception of the buying market, and it was the perception of the publishers, the perception of my colleagues. Uh, so it made, it made a huge difference.